Hey everyone, welcome to Awareness with Ashley. My name is Ashley Stewart. I share a first-hand experience of what it's like living with idiopathic intracranial hypertension. You will hear me call this IIH and migraines. I use my own experience to share what living with IIH and migraines is really like. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing why I haven't been making much content lately and comparing how far I've come in the past few years with IIH and migraines. I'm going to be talking about just how much more I'm able to do now, with limitations of course, and why I dreamed of the life I have right now a few years ago. I want to talk about a few things today. The biggest one is why I haven't been around doing much content, and the second is about this podcast and what I'm hoping to achieve with it, and then the third is kind of the little topic we're going to get into today, which is the reason why I'm not upset, I guess, about why I've had to push back heavily on the amount of content that I'm able to push out right now. I didn't make title slides today. I wanted to play around. I actually just downloaded Final Cut Pro 10 or X or however you want to say that. I finally have a Mac and a computer that can actually run the program. So I took and bit the bullet essentially today and I downloaded that app. So I will need a little bit before I give a review or talk about it much at all because I haven't really been making any like edited content. I'm gonna have to take a long time probably to use this and get used to this new thing. It is quite different, although kind of similar to what iMovie was, but just stepped up its game several notches, I guess. So that's going to take a little bit of getting used to, and then I want to get this podcast running, so that's going to take a little bit. Going forward though, as long as I'm not busy doing anything else, so I don't have anything planned, like example, my trip at the end of October, or I'm going to be away. Live streams will be on Sundays at 4 o'clock my time, which is the exact time I went live today, so you guys can get an idea of where the time zone is. Although it does change a little bit once the time changes back, and we don't observe daylight savings time here, so that's why it'll change, because for the places that do, because we don't change, there's a little bit of a change. So I will let you guys know about that sooner to the time because it will be a Sunday that the time changes. But I really want to focus on my live content because I honestly think this allows me to be and do the best type of content and I think it'll turn into the best podcast content as well. So that's kind of where I'm leaning with that. The podcast is going to take a little bit to launch, so I will make another announcement when that actually goes live. It's just kind of in the first part of the stages, but I've got an intro ready to go, and I will be using this particular video for that, and just cutting out the stuff that I don't want to include in that, essentially, which is going to take me learning how to edit that, which I kind of did on the audio editing app that I'm going to be using, which is GarageBand, which is included in the Mac. And so I kind of did that with my intro. So I have a little bit of an idea of how to do the basics, but I'm not sure how it's going to turn out when I actually take this and turn it into an audio only file and then import that into GarageBand. And I have to learn how to do all of that. And I don't have a lot of time to play with besides on the weekends and This week I'm going to have a little bit of an extra day though because of the national holiday that we're recognizing at work essentially. So I get an extra day this week on Wednesday so I'm hoping to be able to play with that a little bit more then. So the podcast may not be out until next week. I apologize for that, but it's something that I wanted to announce and something I'm really looking forward to. I want to get into though why I haven't been around. So getting into the topic of work, my hours are pretty much now almost full-time. I'm not full-time, but pretty much in terms of how what I can handle and kind of where I want to be, maybe. Well, no, I'm pretty happy actually. As long as I'm getting consistent days off, I'm okay with where I'm at. But with this particular position, it is pretty much full time, which means that I don't have a lot of energy at the end of the day to work on creative projects. 
and I don't have a lot of extra days to also work on this content, which means that my content has been suffering. For those of you who really want shorts and all of that, I honestly don't know when I'm going to get back to that, how many there will be a week if I do get back to that. It will depend if I'm able to stay ahead of it. And essentially, there are a lot of things that go into those shorts. I do hope to get back to it eventually. I'm just not sure essentially when that might be. Between doing everything though, like this is a full-time job as well. So I cannot push myself to the point of burnout. And I may have been going through that a little bit with my creativity and all of that because I reached a point where I really wasn't happy anymore and I really wasn't wanting to put out my creative stuff and that's usually a sign when I'm, you know, at the point where I'm not enjoying something anymore that that's probably the reason for it is I'm just a little bit burnt out. So I may take extended breaks for no reason. I really haven't been on social media all that much in the last month or so and a lot of it is because I've been exhausted at the end of the day and I just... I haven't been in the mood to make content, so that's the honest truth with that. I am also wanting to talk a little bit about why I am essentially really, really thankful despite the fact that I do tend to get frustrated when I can't keep up with YouTube and my social media stuff and my awareness stuff. Why I haven't been frustrated this time, and I think it's because when I reflect and sit down and have time to really, really think about where I'm at, I write and right now, I am at the place that I dreamed and really wanted very, very badly when I was at my worst in 2019. So I've talked about the peaks and valleys. And for those of you who are on the podcast right now, you won't be able to see this picture, but I'm going to do my best to describe it. So I've got Essentially, it looks like a valley. At the bottom, there's a white dot with an arrow pointed down, kind of showing the decline into 2019, which is when I was dealing with diagnosis and medications and all of that. My worst was when I was on the Tapiramate in May of 2019. That's when I was on the Tapiramate and the Acetazolamide at once. I think I tolerated that for about three or four weeks. And then from there, it got a little bit better after I came off the Tapiramate. So I'm kind of going up the hill a little bit, but then I really started to accelerate when I went on the Amavig. And it's really important for me to stress that this picture is kind of what I've been referring to when I talk about going down into a valley and then kind of coming back up again. And I kind of feel like I've reached the other side of the valley. And this means that I am at a place now where I could have only dreamed of just a few even, well, months ago. It's amazing to compare and contrast actually where I am now compared to where I have been even like a year ago because I'm doing things now that I never thought were possible again after I was dealing with the amount of fatigue that I was going through, the pain that I was experiencing, the fact that I would go sometimes especially in the spring and fall where I was really, really struggling. And you know, this is very, very difficult to manage. It's very difficult to deal with. It's extremely frustrating because there's a point where, you know, you're kind of maybe at a stable place and then you start to push that boundary a little bit and then you find out that you aren't as good of a place as what you've thought. This has actually been the opposite for me lately. So because I have been working a pretty much a full-time position, this position is not quite as active physically as what being a cashier was in the position that I was before, but I still stand for eight hours a day. I still am quite active. It's a very physical job because there's a lot of up and down and bending and actually that did scare me a little bit. If I don't kneel down and try to keep my head up, I can actually cause myself some dizziness, especially if I do that for too long a prolonged time. So I have adapted a bit to the situation and I've adapted so that I'm not bending over, 
but that I'm actually working it so that I kneel down and that I'm not actually bending and I minimize any bending. There are even times where I have to bend from my knees as well, but it's not a totally prolonged thing. And I'm actually in fairly good physical shape. I have think I've been noticing a little bit of weight gain in the last little bit and this I think has multiple reasons. I haven't been exactly great with following my basics. So like making sure I'm not drinking my calories, making sure that, you know, treats are only treats and all of that kind of stuff, you know, you kind of fall off the wagon a little bit and kind of get kicked back on and it's very very difficult of course having a full-time job and squeezing in even 30 minutes of exercise I did actually manage to get in my exercise today unfortunately I didn't prop it up on here to share it but I did go about 6.2 miles on the bike which is great Sundays are again not only my live stream day but I'm hoping to squeeze in my workouts there as well Maybe eventually I'll be able to squeeze it in on a Wednesdays. That actually splits it up quite nicely. Ideally, I get up to three days a week, but I'll worry about that in a little bit and find out when that might work best for me. When I was on the Tapiramate, I was at my lows. I could barely get off the couch. I wasn't able to function at all. I can't tell you how bad that felt and how frustrated it was. Well, I was not only... I didn't really actually have time to feel frustrated because I was so, so, so sick. And... There was a point last year where I was starting to get frustrated because I felt like, oh, maybe my gap in my resume is hurting me to a point. Okay, this was, sorry, not last year, the year before that, when I was starting to look for work because I keep forgetting I've been at the place I'm at for <laughs> about a year now. So I guess it might have been, you know, a year ago in about April or so. So maybe a year and a half ago, more than two years, but, you know, kind of get the idea of time there. And it's because I was feeling much better and I felt like I was able to maybe start to do something, but I wasn't sure exactly where my limitations would be. And over the past year, that's actually what I've been trying to figure out. What are my limitations and how far can I go before I push myself too far? And so far, you know, I found those limits a few times. So I talked about how burnt out I was in July and that was mainly due to work. And so that's why there wasn't much content in the summer. I was really trying to recuperate from that. And now that I'm kind of, we're kind of almost through September and I've had a very consistent schedule for a little bit, I can actually finally say, I think I found something that not only will work, but that is going to be my career. And that's the most important thing to me is that I am very, very happy. I'm the happiest I've been in a very long time. I know I've said that before and then come back and went, actually, maybe I'm not as happy as what I thought I was. I'm really, really starting to dig deep down and find out I'm not happy where I am. And I can honestly say now, no, this, this has probably been the best that I've been in many, many years, probably since my first first semester of fourth year of university where I was doing almost all electives so it was all, almost all classes I was interested in and I mean that last semester was awesome too in many ways because it was all more classes that I was interested in with biochemistry it was difficult too because it was so much information and like really difficult because it was all biochem classes but I got sick also not very far into that semester so I really wasn't able to soak it up and enjoy it and so that first semester, fourth year, when I was feeling good and really, really enjoying school and finally felt like I'd found a group of people that I got along with outside of classes, it was uh, probably my peak of my university experience. I kind of feel like that now in a different way. And, you know, I can see this being a long-term thing. And I think that's the most important thing to stress. I am at a place now that I only dreamed about a few years ago. And honestly didn't think it was possible as I said earlier so when you're at the point where you can't even go a few hours without like really really struggling with your energy levels or having migraines almost constantly like around the time that I was at my worst I can't remember a day that I had that I didn't have some type of head pain or headache 
And now I really am kind of limited to migraines. Well, it depends on the weather. Like the weather actually does play a huge role in my migraines. As long as the weather is behaving, which it's starting to kind of change again. So like fall and spring are always very, very rough depending on the weather changing and how much it goes up and down and back and forth and all of that. But besides the weather, the only other time that I really, really hurt and am really in a lot of pain is the week before my period. And so the fact that there's a lot of things that are now out of my control, but I try to, as I've said in previous videos, I try to control the things I can so that I can be better prepare for those things that I can't. So for those of you who are familiar with like the bucket analogy of migraines with the trigger, so your bucket is a certain amount full depending on the things that you cannot control. So by throwing in and tossing in all of those things that you can control, you can essentially make it so that your bucket's not overflowing. Well, as best as you can. Sometimes the water's near the top and there's nothing you can do about it and it'll trigger a migraine. And, you know, I've actually had a few days already where I've had to work a full day with a migraine. Now, my migraines are also a lot different than what they were when I was at my worst in 2019. Also, when I was dealing with IIH as well, because my IIH wasn't in remission at that point. But with the migraines in particular, it's very different experience than it used to be when I was at my worst and not on the medication that I'm on now, which is the aim of egg. And that is that I just they're different. They're not as debilitating as they used to be. They feel different. I know I'm off. I know I'm not myself. It's almost a loss in productivity versus a complete shutdown of my entire body. So it's a completely different experience. And although that loss in productivity is noticeable, and I do get frustrated by the way my brain is not as sharp and as quick as what it normally is, it's not the same as before when I was dealing with a complete total shutdown, need lights off, need to stay in the dark, almost have a nap, sleep through this because I can't tolerate it any longer, or have my ice helmet on. Essentially, it's like an ice cap. And whenever you're experiencing a migraine, it like covers your entire head so that, and you can even get some that will cover up your eyes as well because your eyes often do hurt quite a bit when you're having a migraine. But or at least I know they did for me. And cold just feels so nice when you're in the midst of a migraine. I don't know about anyone else, but I've actually in purposely had ice cream or, you know, ice or something so that you almost get like a brain freeze type feeling on your head because that coldness and frozen feeling around my head and or in my jaw and all of that just felt so good when I was having a migraine. Maybe that's just me. I haven't had to use one in... I don't even know how long. I still have it though in case I need it, but I haven't needed it. I'm hoping you guys have enjoyed this one. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing and leaving a review on your favorite podcasting app. It really helps get the show out there. Hope to see you again next week for our next episode. Bye everyone.